today we're talking about this AMD's Radeon R9 3080X. Now I think this card has been a bit forgotten. While other people might have been looking for a GeForce GTX 960 or 970, being a nerd that enjoys the underdog, I specifically searched for this video card to put in the system I built myself a few years ago. Well, if you went with Nvidia, the good news is those cards are still being supported, therefore have updated drivers while AMD decided it was time to drop support for the 300 line of cards, only about 5 years in. I don't think that was particularly a good move because the card is from 2015 and as you're going to see, it's still quite good in most games. However, the newer games didn't see driver optimization and yeah, some are not great. As for the cost, when released, these cards were sold for about $230, but I remember paying around $150 in the secondhand market for mine at the time I built my system. Considering they cost at least $200 today, it wasn't a bad deal. Are they worth that much? That's for you to decide. But let's go ahead and look at what this card can do with its 4GB of GDDR5 and a 256-bit bus. This is the Gigabyte G1 gaming version of the card, and I don't want to be an Apple polisher, but I've owned two Gigabyte G1 gaming cards, and from what I've seen, their cooling is superb. In idle, they turn the fans off for silent operation and light up the sign to say it's okay. Fans are off, but I'm doing great. The system we're using is the X79 Quad Channel Memory Beast that runs with the slowest CPU that fits on the platform. The i7-3820 that should still perform pretty well with its 4 cores, 8 threads and 10 megabytes of cache, running at up to 3.8 GHz. Let's look at some games with this combo and you can tell me what you think afterwards in the comment section. As per usual, we're starting with older games and moving to newer ones along the way. All games are running at 1920 by 1080 Borderlands 3 is from September 2019, it's a fun game, very action heavy but it isn't very demanding. With medium settings, the system manages to keep the frame rate between 50 and 70 even in the middle of crazy gunfights of the game. I did see it drop to 40 FPS one time, but overall the game is very fluid. Two months after Borderlands 3, in November of 2019, Kojima's masterpiece hit the market. Death Stranding has got the prettiest landscapes you can find in any game and with graphical settings set to default, the system managed to keep the game running above 40 FPS most of the time. Now I only wish I could understand half of what's going on in this game with the flying ghost people and black whale octopus hybrids spawning out of nowhere to terrorize you. Anyway, great experience, to the next one. Skipping 4 months ahead, we get to the release of Doom Eternal in March of 2020. Following the new action-packed style of Doom 2016, we kind of knew what to expect from Doom Eternal. Hectic demon killing and awesome optimization, especially with the great implementation of the Vulkan API. With graphical settings set to high, the game stays mostly above 50 FPS with a few drops here and there, overall very fluid and therefore very playable. Moving 8 months forward, we get to Assassin's Creed Valhalla. This game is absurdly demanding. You can play this game in medium settings if you don't care very much for fluidity. FPS hovers at around 30, but you can always lower the graphical settings to the minimum and that'll get you above 40 FPS for most of the time. The month after Valhalla in December 2020, the infamous Cyberpunk 2077 was released, and as you would expect, this is where the R9 3080X coupled with the i7 3820 really start to squeal. On medium graphical settings, the experience is already pretty harsh, with the FPS settling in the high 20s. Setting the configurations to low graphic settings gets you anywhere from 30 to 40 FPS. You can try using resolution scaling, that will definitely help, but personally I didn't like the way it looked and I would probably choose to play this on low with 100% of 1080p. Jumping to the end of 2021, we have the Halo Infinite free to play multiplayer game. Unfortunately this game runs terribly on the 380X. It's surprising, but with no driver optimization it is what it is. 
the textures don't look all that great and you get around 20 fps on the minimum settings scaling down the resolution doesn't help all that much so i would call that this game is basically unplayable with this video card it's undeniable that the Radeon R9 3080X is a powerful and useful card even today. Now I can't recommend that you go out looking for one because with lack of support, newer games are going to be less and less optimized for it. But nevertheless, I hope that you enjoyed this video and if you want to look at something a bit more retro, check out my latest one on the Voodoo 4 or if you want to stick with something a bit more modern, check out this video on Age of Empires 4.